as I read the Constitution, there is a right to religious freedom. I don't read in the Constitution a right to contraception. <laughs> Hi, I'm Delia Santos and you're watching The Current. Today we'll be discussing reproductive health and religious freedom. Obama recently revised his Health Care Act to specify that insurance companies and not religious institutions are responsible for funding contraception coverage. Many are still unsatisfied, however, and it remains a hotly contested issue in the lead up to the election. Later in the show, we'll be discussing with Lisa Matz from American Association of University Women. But first, let's go to Mitchell with Student on the Street. Hi. I'm Mitchell, and I'm out here on the street asking students what they think about Obama's health care plan and contraception coverage. It's a personal moral issue and a public health issue. If people find that it violates their Catholic values, they personally don't need to get it. But I think as a whole, it should be offered. Georgetown like, promotes plurality and understand. Georgetown as a university understands that people from all different faiths are attracted to this institute, and so they should really make it available. I think as a private institution they hold the right to opt out of, of, health, of it, but I don't think that it's, they'd be serving their students very well too. To serve the most students and to cover, the, cover all the bases, it seems necessary to have everything out there. I think Georgetown definitely uh, should be providing birth control for their employees and students. It's both a morality and a health issue because you morally can't, can't restrict people's uh, health, honestly. Hi, I'm Delia Santos and I'm here with Lisa Matz, Director of Public Policy and Government Relations for the American Association of University Women. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lisa. Oh, Delia, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to it. So to start off with, can you tell us a little bit about AAUW? What is your ideology and how does this relate to contraception? Sure. Uh, AAUW is a national grassroots women's organization that, believe it or not, has been around since 1881. So we work on a variety of issues related to women's rights, but uh, women's reproductive health is one of them, and we believe strongly that women should have uh, access without copay to preventative care. The government often intervenes on diseases like influenza and provides preventative measures like shots because it poses an immediate public health threat. For unplanned pregnancies, however, the immediate risk is not as clear. So why do you think that the government should subsidize access to birth control? Well, I think one of the things we need to be clear about is that it's not just access to birth control, it's access to medicine. And some medicine, some birth control, like the pill, is used for reasons other than actual uh, birth control issues. So that's number one. Number two, this is not something that the president just pulled out of his hat, that women's groups just decided upon. The Institutes of Medicine did a full-length study really trying to figure out what is it that's kind of basic to the underpinnings of women's health, to prevention and, and good care. And birth control is absolutely part of that list. There's obviously a lot of opposition to the stance about reproductive rights, um, one of which is coming from a religious perspective. What is your response to those who view access to birth control as a threat to American religious freedom? One of the things that's critical to the underpinning of religious liberty is not just the exercise of religion, but the freedom from religion as well. And so when we talk about religious liberty, we need to really make sure that we're looking at both sides of the coin. One of the things that I like about the president's accommodation is that I really feel like it respects both sides of those coin and at the same time doesn't politicize women's health and make sure that we still have access to the medicines and the uh, preventive screenings that we need. So from your perspective, what kind of shift is there when you talk about it from either the health perspective or the religious perspective? You know, when people talk about it from a women's health perspective, it really changes the tenor in a lot of ways. I think that unfortunately sometimes religious issues get uh, overly politicized or overly identified with the right or the left. And the reality is, is that there are people of good conscience on both sides of the debate. Uh, so I find that really troubling. Republicans are using this debate to highlight Obama's supposed insensitivity to religious institutions. Do you think that Obama is infringing upon religious freedom? I think the Obama administration has been really open to religious faith and religious organizations. They have really kept open the White House office on, on faith programs. They have not at all changed, which actually AEW would like to see, the notion of whether religious 
religious organizations can discriminate based on religion in their hiring practices. Uh, so they've been very open. They've uh, had an open door policy with uh, all kinds of different faiths. And I feel like uh, they have been very accommodating uh, in a way that an American government should be given our pluralistic society. So uh, this is not to me an attack. This is literally just another thing that's coming down the pike as, as far as healthcare reform. It was great having you today. Thank you so much for having me. I think it was a great discussion. Now we'll go to Mitchell for a student perspective. Thanks, Celia. Hi, my name is Mitchell Hochberg, and I am joined today by Kieran Raval, who is the Grand Knight of Georgetown's Knights of Columbus Council. Kieran, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me here. So, Kieran, what exactly are the Knights of Columbus, and why are you engaged in the debate over contraception? The Knights of Columbus are the world's largest Catholic service fraternal organization. We have 1.7 million members worldwide. The Knights have had a long history, in particular, with issues of religious liberty. Um, as you may know, there has been in, in America, unfortunately, a thread of anti-Catholic uh, prejudice. And the Knights, as an entire organization, are very much invested in the current controversy over uh, the, the HHS mandate because we believe it's important to defend um, Catholics' uh, rights of religious freedom. This issue has obviously picked up a little bit recently. Uh, President Obama said initially that religious organizations would have to cover costs of contraception for their employees that was later compromised so that private insurers are going to have to pick up the burden. Do you object to that compromise? Yeah, I think the compromise was not so much a compromise uh, and, and it was more of just kind of uh, smoke and mirrors. It does nothing for self-insuring Catholic organizations. For instance, the Archdiocese of Washington here, uh, right here, is a self-insuring Catholic organization with 3,000 employees. It does nothing for them. It does nothing for Catholic uh, health insurance companies, which typically cater to Catholic organizations. It does nothing to, pro uh, to provide uh, conscience protection for them. So it's really a kind of weak compromise, if you can even call it that. What really needs to happen is a robust um, set of uh, protections for religious liberty and for rights of conscience. We shouldn't be compromising on the First Amendment here. Do you view this debate as a debate over American values? Do you think this says anything about what Americans do value? Sure, absolutely. The right to religious freedom is the first to be enshrined in the Bill of Rights. So I think that certainly the founders very much valued the role that religion plays in a society and seeing it as uh, absolutely uh, essential almost to having a, a functioning republic and a, a healthy one at that. So I think this is very much a, a, a debate about um, American values and what America holds dear today. And, and is it um, going to sort of remain true to, to her founding documents, uh, to the Constitution, to what the founders enshrined? Um, or are we off on a, on a different path that I think could perhaps have um, some, some serious negative consequences. For instance, if the Catholic Church is forced out of the healthcare industry, that would be catastrophic to America, catastrophic. We've already seen the church forced out of adoption services in some areas right here in DC actually even, and they were doing great work. But when, when uh, government regulations come in and say, you must violate your religious tenets or else, the church has to remain true to her, her beliefs first and foremost. Kieran, thank you so much for joining us today. Delia, back to you. Well, that's our show. You've been watching The Current. To join the conversation, go to gucurrent.com.